Hey internet, what is up? Welcome to part three of my four part camera basics series. Today we are talking about camera lenses, yay! Different lenses have different characteristics, like different f-stops, which depends on how much light you let into your camera, uh, different focal lengths, which controls kind of the angle at which you, um, you know, how much of what you're shooting at you get in the picture. If it's a wide angle lens and you're gonna be able to have that wider angle of view, you're gonna grab more of whatever is uh, you're taking a picture of. If it's like a telephoto lens, you're gonna get kind of a smaller angle of view, so it's gonna be more close up and zoom on your subject. Uh, so it really depends what you are looking for. So one of the first things I wanna talk about is lens compatibility. A lot of people, when buying a camera, ask what, you know, what lenses can I use with my camera? What is compatible? Um, you can't just go out and buy any type of lens for your camera. There are different mounts, which means if you um, are using a Canon camera, then there are lenses with Canon mounts that are compatible with your camera. Same with Nikon and Sony and Panasonic. Each camera, um, each brand of camera has their own specific mount that you have to um, get your lens in. So typically say, um, you know, I have Canon cameras. So my Canon DSLR will only be compatible with Canon mounts. So that means all of the Canon EF uh, lenses will be compatible with my camera, but also you can get lenses from third-party companies like Sigma, Tamron, Tokina. Um, there are different companies outside of Canon that make lenses that I can use. I just have to make sure it is the Canon mount lens because these third-party companies also make uh, lenses for other cameras like Sony, Panasonic, etc. So when buying lenses, usually you can go to the third-party companies for typically uh, cheaper lenses. Um, it is just up to you kind of to go out and maybe test one or look at reviews online to see which one best uh, suits you. Usually in my experience, um, I have just stuck with Canon glass when it comes to my Canon camera because I never have problems with um, autofocus, I never have problems with you know the lens communicating with the camera because it's a Canon lens and a Canon camera so it always works very smoothly but I have also had good experiences with um, third-party dealers like Tamron. If you're a Canon user one common question is what the heck is the difference between a EF lens and an EFS lens? Um, and there's not a lot of differences, but the EFS lens, just the way it's made, uh, those are specifically tailored to the kind of lower DSLR models, like the Rebels um, and the EOS line, which means um, those are the cameras that have a crop sensor or a APS-C sensor. They're APS-C uh, camera. So I'm going to get a little bit more into sensor size in a little bit, but just so you know, if you have like a T3i, a T4i, a T5i, any of those cameras in the EOS line, then the EFS lenses are compatible with your camera, um, but also you can buy any of the other Canon EF lenses. Those are also compatible with your camera. So if you had like a Canon 5D or a Canon 60, kind of the higher range full frame cameras, you are not going to be able to use the EFS lenses because they're specifically tailored to the APS-C. So one of the uh, most important parts of different camera lenses are the different focal lengths. All this means is, you know, when you're looking at uh, cameras, this is the, um, the numbers that you see like with millimeter bias. So it'll be like 16 to 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter or 100 millimeter lenses. This just describes how much of the environment that you're trying to capture is going to be in the picture. I think it is easier to kind of see what I'm talking about rather than just talking about it. So if I had a camera on a tripod and it stayed in the same place and I just was changing out the lenses and I was taking a picture of the same exact thing, this would be a picture at the 16 millimeter focal length. If I changed out the lens and put a 35 millimeter on it, this would be the picture that you get with a 35 millimeter. And then say I turned it to 200 millimeters, this would be the picture. So as you can tell, just focal length means kind of the angle of view that you're getting into the picture. So the lower the number, like 
um, you know, 16 millimeters, 18 millimeters, 35 millimeters, those are going to be your wider angle lenses. So you're getting more in the picture. So that is great for landscapes or, you know, wide angles just kind of work for everything. Um, but when you start getting into telephoto lenses, um, you know, start getting into the higher uh, focal lengths like 70 millimeters or 135 millimeters or 200 millimeters those are going to be super tight angles they're going to be more zoomed uh, into your subject there are different types of lenses um, a prime lens just means it's a fixed focal length so it's just one focal length which um, you know means if you have a 35 millimeter lens that is a prime lens it's just 35 millimeters you can't zoom in zoom out or anything it's just 35 millimeters if you have a zoom camera like a 70 to 200 a zoom lens that means that the lowest focal length you can go is 70 millimeters and the highest uh, focal length you can go is 200 millimeters so you can zoom in zoom out into your subject now going into sensor size uh, your sensor size actually does affect uh, what we're talking about when it comes to focal length. So different cameras have different sensor sizes. Um, now you're, you might ask, you know, what the heck is a sensor? A sensor is just like a rectangle inside of your camera and that is what you're actually capturing the information of your photo or your video on. So the light comes through your camera lens, uh, it is captured on the sensor and, you know, it's digitized into your camera or whatever. Um, so depending on what camera ha you have, you have different sizes of sensors. So if we're talking about Canon cameras, Canon cameras come in two different sensor sizes. Basically your uh, lower price models like the Canon T3i, T5i, 70D, 7D, those are crop factor cameras. They have a APS-C sensor in them. When you start going uh, into the higher model, Canon DSLRs like a Canon 6D or a Canon 5D, those have 35 millimeter um, full frame sensors. Other cameras like the Panasonic GH4, um, you know, different micro four thirds cameras like that, those types of cameras have a micro four thirds sensor. So different kinds of cameras have different types of sensors. So typically the biggest size of sensor that you're going to encounter, I'm not saying this is like the biggest type of sensor ever, but for the context of this video, the biggest size sensor will be the uh, sensor that is in like the Canon full frame cameras, which is a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. So if 35 millimeter sensor is that big, then the uh, Canon APS-C sensors are like that big, a micro four thirds sensor is like that big, and then like a super 16 millimeter sensor is even smaller than that. Um, I'm actually gonna show you a chart. This hopefully kind of helps you kind of visualize what the different sensors look like. Why do I care about the sensor size? Well, you should care about the sensor size because that changes um, technically the focal length of your lenses. The focal lengths on lenses are based off of if you put them on a full frame camera. So what that means is if I put my 16 to 35 millimeter lens on my Canon 5D, which has a 35 millimeter full frame sensor, then that focal length would be a true 16 to 35 millimeters. That means 16 millimeters is gonna be super wide, zoom in to 35 is gonna be a little bit less wide. That is a true 16 to 35 millimeters. However, when you put a 16 to 35 millimeter um, lens on a, say, a Canon 70D, that is an APS-C sensor, which is different than the full frame. So that means that the focal length isn't gonna be exactly 16 to 35 what it was on my Canon 5D. Basically, if a sensor isn't a full frame 35 millimeter sensor, it has a certain crop factor. All that means is it's just a number that you multiply the focal lengths by to get the true focal length of that lens. So an APS-C camera has a 1.6 times crop factor. What that means is when I put my 16 and 35 millimeter on my Canon 70D, 
instead of 16 millimeters, now I have um, an equivalent to whatever 16 times 1.6 is. So when I put that 16 to 35 on my APS-C camera, like a 70D or 7D, or a T3i or T5i or whatever, that 16 to 35 turns into like a 25 to 55 millimeter focal length because I just took the crop factor of what an APS-C sensor is, which is 1.6, and I said, okay, what is 1.6 times 16? which is like approximately 25, and then 1.6 times 35 is approximately 55. So that 16 to 35 millimeter lens that um, was a true 16 to 35 on the full frame camera is now gonna be a little bit more zoomed on a crop factor camera. The wider the lens, the more stable your video is going to be if you're taking just a video handheld. So say if you have like a 35 millimeter uh, lens, when you're taking handheld video, it's a wider lens, so it's going to take in less of that shake of your hand. But if you have like a super zoomed in uh, lens, like say a hundred millimeter, it's going to be really hard to get like non-shaky footage um, when just taking handheld video. If it was on a tripod or a monopod, you wouldn't have problems. Um, but that kind of is how focal length affects the pictures and video you're taking. Um, typically, uh, you know, if you want to pay a little bit extra, lenses will have some type of image stabilization or different third party lenses, call it like VC, like vibration control or something. Um, so image stabilization is something to consider when buying lenses. If, you know, you take a lot of handheld video or just, you know, handheld pictures, um, you know, if you're in a super dark room and you have to lower your shutter speed a lot, um, you're more prone to getting shaky pictures. But if you have image stabilization and you pop that on, that will help out with getting non-shaky pictures or non-shaky video. I know that was a lot, but if you have any questions, make sure to ask me in the comment section below, or you can tweet me. I am all over the interwebs. So hit that like and subscribe button if you dig the video. I'm putting out the last installment of the series next week, and I, that is going to kind of just expand on kind of editing workflow and maybe a little bit uh, more about camera gear and stuff like that, um, kind of the software that I use, and yeah. At the end of May, I am going to Iceland, which I am super stoked about, so I'll be putting out some cool videos about um, that in the future, and then there's also some really cool stuff coming to my channel this summer. So stay tuned, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!